In this experiment, we will demonstrate Taylor columns, which are a special case of thermal wind balance. We have our rotating tank spinning at a rate of about five rotations per minute with an obstacle or a hockey puck in the tank that's a small fraction of the total depth of the fluid. We've let this spin up into solid body rotation, and so as we can see from the top view, the paper dot's not moving. We insert some color dye to view flow, and we put the dye upstream of the obstruction where in terms of what direction we anticipate the flow will move. We then slightly decrease the rotation rate to, to in the transition period while it's adjusting to the new rotation rate, generate a flow relative to the rotating tank. It's important that this is a weak flow, so that's why we turn it down only a slight amount so that the Rosby number is small because those are the conditions under which this experiment is valid. As we can see, the, pay, the die has this curious property of going around our hockey puck rather than directly over it, despite the fact that there's no obstruction through most of the depth of the column. There's a seemingly no reason why it can't go over it. The side view, however, though, reveals that the flow is moving as a coherent vertical sheet known as a Taylor column. And this is a consequence of the Taylor-Proudman theorem, which says that if you have a inviscid homogeneous, so with uniform density fluid that is rapidly rotating where you generate a geostrophic flow, that um, you have zero vertical wind shear in the flow. And so the obstruction, this hockey puck at the bottom of the tank means that directly at the bottom, you obviously can't go through the hockey puck. So there the velocity has to be zero and therefore the velocity over the hockey puck has to be zero throughout the entire depth of the column. So it kind of projects that hockey puck sort of virtually up through the depth of the column. We can add some more dye and do the experiment again after waiting a few minutes for things to adjust. And if we do this rotation again, we again see that the dye is moving around our hockey puck as well as paper dots that we put in to trace the flow at the surface. They go around the hockey puck rather than over it, over it. And again, this is a very dramatic consequence of thermal wind balance, which relates vertical shear to horizontal density gradients. And in this case, there are no horizontal density gradients, so the vertical shear has to be zero. When we turn off the rotation, we see that the dye and the paper dots have no problem moving over the hockey puck because in this case, the flow is very strong and so we're no longer in geostrophic balance and therefore don't meet the conditions for thermal imbalance or the Taylor-Proudman theorem to apply.